in Nando's with a veggie wrap Or I'm sitting in Leon, munching a Gobi Whichever one's nearer Vegan, now I see clearer No meat, no cheese, no milk, no eggs What's up Vegan? It's Sunday the 3rd of January and we are three days into Veganuary. How are you all doing? Have you been inspired by the challenge yet? I want to prepare you for a great week ahead, starting with the first meal of the day, which some people say is the most important. Breakfast. We all have different desires at breakfast time. Sometimes I want something quick and light and sometimes I wake up really hungry and want something more substantial. Well today I am going to show you three easy breakfast ideas that you can try in the week or whenever you fancy. But first let's catch up with Clelia and see how her second day as a vegan went. It is day two of the January and I'm in bed about to eat. Um, I didn't really no, I didn't. I didn't cook today because I sort of realised a little bit late that I made a ton of rice and now I have to come up with different ways to eat it. Today I have made, served myself the rice from yesterday, poured some sesame oil on it with barbecue sauce, seaweed flakes and avocado. And I also have my trusty medication right here that I have to take twice a day because of my lupus. How am I feeling today, day two of the January? I'm actually feeling quite good. I'm craving a lot of things. I've been craving eggs <laughs> because dishes like this dish rice and the sauce that I made yesterday, it's a really good dish to eat with rice because the rice balances out the spiciness. I mean, not the rice, sorry. The egg will balance out the spiciness. So I have really been craving eggs really badly and I need to buy some chocolate. Well, I need to buy some snacks in general. I'm a very snackish person. I'm a very snackish person. So I do enjoy snacking a lot. So. I need to make sure I have vegan alternatives to the snacks that I really enjoy. My uh, cast iron skillets arrived, so I am so excited to see what what I can do with it. I still have a ton of load of rice. I'm not sure if you can freeze it, but I might try it. But tomorrow I will make plantain and chickpea curry, which I will also eat along with our dear friend rice that's where i am at right now just thought i'd do a little update i'm going to give you guys a little bit of a taste test on this bad boy right here it's actually nice it's actually really nice don't forget to drink your water guys water is important but yeah this little um makeshift that i just did actually turned out quite decent I wasn't quite sure how the barbecue would fare against the seaweed, but it works really well. Clearly, I'm loving your Asian inspired food and your creativity at just throwing whatever you've got left together. I spent a lot of time in China and basically just lived off rice and veg, so I had to get quite used to just putting things with rice. It sounds about right for the cravings to kick in now. My advice to you is to keep yourself fully stocked of substitute snacks that you would normally eat to help satisfy those cravings and stop you reaching for a fridge radar or whatever you normally eat as a snack. I really look forward to seeing that curry tomorrow. It sounds absolutely delicious. So before we get on to breakfast, let me remind you of the competition we have where you can win your very own ultimate vegan hamper and 30 pounds delivery credit. Competition time. Would you like to win this ultimate vegan hamper and 30 pounds delivery credit? In every daily YouTube video throughout January, there will be a secret word. You must go over to our Instagram at Vegan Connoisseur, like the respective daily video, comment the word as a hashtag, and tag one friend you'd like to share the prize with. And of course, make sure you're subscribed on YouTube and following on Instagram. A winner will be randomly selected each day and will be entered into the final draw for the prize with the winner of that announced on Tuesday the 2nd of February. And of course, you can enter each day to increase your chances of winning. Okay, so on to breakfast. First one is a traditional English breakfast combination, bacon and eggs. I have tried lots of bacon substitutes, but I've decided this, as in this, the brand, is the best one. It tastes like bacon, smells like bacon, even looks a little bit like bacon. But guess what? 
It's not real bacon and it's made from soya. This thing is incredible. It even sizzles. Now, I've also tried quite a few egg replacements, but sometimes they come in the form of a replacer in a recipe. So like you'd put in a cake, for example, as opposed to eating actually like eggs. But I have found this one called Bonsan Absolutely Vegan. It's essentially just tofu, but it's colored with turmeric to make it look like eggs and it has some sugar, some salt and some spices. So both of these are healthy substitutes and are extremely high in iron, vitamin B12 and of course protein. Now I'm going to simply serve these on a slice of whole grain seeded toast. Um, if I had avocado, I might have an avocado with it, but unfortunately I do not. Actually, yeah, I don't think I have an avocado. Next up is a more American style breakfast, pancakes. These pancakes are very easy to make and can be topped with anything you like. I know some Americans like to use chicken or bacon, so maybe you could have a meat substitute like this isn't bacon. But I'm personally not a fan of mixing sweet and savory. So I am just going to use fresh fruit with some agave syrup on top. Um, the fresh fruit I've got or some blackberries. The supermarkets seem to be very out of other types of fruit, but I quite like blackberries. You could use anything, of course. And agave syrup, this is the one that I use, um, is really delicious. It's just a nice sweet sauce to put on top of anything, really. It's quite healthy because it's made from agave plants as opposed to sugar. Now, a key ingredient in the Easy Pancakes is a thing called Ox Aquafaba. Now, this is an egg substitute, so you can use this in recipes where eggs are normally needed, so things like cakes and pastries, but in this case, we're gonna use it in pancakes. This stuff is amazing. Okay, so the recipe I've got should make me six pancakes. I've got 190 grams of plain flour in here. Here I've got, oh, spilt a bit. Here I've got 65 grams of caster sugar, and I'm just going to get one teaspoon of baking powder, and then I'm gonna mix all those together. Now we need a clean bowl. We're going to mix all the wet ingredients together. We've got the Oggs Aquafaba. So you probably need to shake this very well before you open it. So we'll just measure 125 ml of this. It's about half of this size pack. We've got 125 ml in there. Now we need to put this into a clean bowl like so. And then we need to whisk it until it turns pale. So it's literally like you're beating an egg. Because I guess you would do this in a similar way. But apparently this is supposed to take 30 seconds and then it should start to become frothy and pale in color. So that's about 30 seconds. It is slightly pale, it's slightly frothy. Now we need to add three and a half tablespoons of vegetable oil. And then I've got 75 milliliters of plant-based milk. I've used oat milk, but of course you can use whatever you like. Now we're just gonna whisk that together and mix all those wet ingredients together. Okay, so now we need to slowly pour the wet ingredients into the dry ingredients and whisk it as we go until we start to get a bit of a batter. So that's not working because the bowl is spinning. Whisk, 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 whisk. whisk. Now, it did say little by little and I think they were quite generous littles. It just all goes in the same place, right? It should be fine. So it is starting to look like pancake batter. So that's all of the wet and dry ingredients mixed together. Now it's time to put this in the fridge for 30 minutes. Then we can make some pancakes. And finally, something which I tend to have most mornings, a green smoothie. What I love about smoothies is how quick, simple, easy, and 
healthy they are. In my smoothies, I like to use frozen fruit because it makes the smoothie cold naturally. I am a tropical guy. I've gone for a tropical twist smoothie mix, which has mango, pineapple, and papaya in. But of course, you can use any fruit you desire. Some combinations I often use are peach and pineapple, strawberry and mango. To make my smoothies healthy, I also throw in some greens. So I've got a load of spinach here, which I'll put in it. And also for that extra health boost, I like to add a few key ingredients. Firstly, chia seeds. Now, these are incredible because they are high in fiber, omega-3 and protein. And you can just sprinkle as much as you like on. Usually a tablespoon is fine. Some spirulina powder. I first discovered this at a restaurant review, a place called Redemption in London. I'll put the video on the screen now. They made me a smoothie that had spirulina in and educated me on what this is. This is really powerful stuff. It says it's a bioactive super giant and it's been grown on earth for over 2.4 billion years. It's a natural source of vitamins A, B1, B2, iodine and manganese. So I always add a teaspoon of this. Last but not least, some golden flax seed. This stuff is high in zinc and fiber and is a source of protein. So it's an easy thing to just sneak into a smoothie and get your nutrients. As I'm only making this for one person, I'll grab one cup of apple juice. You can use plant milk as well. Sometimes I like to use rice milk or oat milk, but on this occasion, I'm feeling like apple juice. So I'm gonna use one cup, which is about 236 milliliters, I think. My blender is American, so I typically tend to use cup measurements. Now, onto the fruit, which as I said, was a tropical blend of mango, pineapple, and papaya. For one person, I'd say about 100 grams is a good amount. And then I've got a handful of spinach here, so I'll add that in, spirulina powder. Now I'll use a teaspoon of this for one person. A tablespoon of flaxseed off with a sprinkle of chia seeds don't usually measure it like just put in a nice little sprinkle imagine it's like on top of an ice cream or something that seems like a good amount now I'll blend it okay so here we have our green smoothie Looks very green in color it might be a little bit gloopy but I quite like it like that okay Cheers. It just tastes so healthy. Well, that's it for this video. I hope these recipes will give you some inspiration for when you're choosing your breakfast next week. I've also challenged Clelia to make at least one of these recipes, so we'll see how she gets on with that. You'll find me back on your screens tomorrow. As always, please like, subscribe, and share this video to help it be discovered amongst those millions of other videos out there on the interweb. Stay safe, keep washing your hands. Peace. You know your love.